uh, you have a new initiative called Stand Up for Beer. Tell us all about that, and then we'll talk about the beer industry. But let's start with Stand Up for Beer. Sure. So the uh, the URL is Stand with Beer. Um, and um, have you had an opportunity to look through it at all? No. Um, I've been going crazy in the last week. Totally understand. Joel, if you want to give me uh, share permission, I can actually all uh -huh. through it. Okay, let's do that. You go to, I think it's security. At the bottom, you should be able to allow. Thank you, have it. There we go. Good. Okay, let me know when, can you see this now? Oh, that's pretty. So Stand With Beer was designed to be a comprehensive website for consumers, policymakers, and the media to be able to talk about the proactive initiatives that we're doing at the Beer Institute. Um, that's everything from economic impact, voluntary disclosure, um, investing in low and no alcohol options, as well as um, highlighting some of the things that the liquor industry is doing that we would like to draw attention to that are unfair advantages that we see in the marketplace. Um, so just from a top line perspective, it's pretty sleek, um, scrolling through, you kind of get the top lines of all the stuff that we're talking about. And then each of these pages actually dives into something a little further. So like nutritional transparency is talking about the Brewers Voluntary Disclosure Initiative, where we disclose more, um, voluntary nutritional information than any other alcohol category. So you know, that's everything from calories, ingredients, freshness, um, um, ABV, protein, fat. Um, this is something that already existed on all light beer, but we expanded it in 2016 um, to on a voluntary basis. And, and brewers are, are really latching onto that in a way that no one else is. Um, and then simultaneously, we're calling out handouts to big liquor. So these are things... Um, Obviously, it has a lot to do with the canned cocktail fight that's been going on, but also we're just highlighting rum and cover over and the IRC 5010 program. Um, are you familiar with either of those? I am very uh, well, I am somewhat familiar with the uh, rum cover over and a little bit in the um, um, 5010 program, but I will confess that I am not an expert on either one, which that's okay. I suspect that you are. That's why we did it. Um, so a lot of it is about, you know, level playing field. So when we talk about canned cocktails, um, one of the things that we want to point out is that just because they're saying it's unfair doesn't necessarily tell the whole story. Um, you know, beer and liquor are different products and there are already things that create uh, unlevel playing fields between the different industries. And two of these programs, Rum Cover Over and the IRC 5010 tax credit, provide an advantage to the liquor industry that they're getting that other people don't. Um, so we just want to point that out. Um, rum cover over, you said you know a bit about, obviously the intent of it is that the US government refunds from tax revenue to the local governments of PR and the USVI, where they produce the rum, they get the tax revenue refunded back. It was enacted um, to fund infrastructure programs and things that help the citizens. Um, over the years, that's kind of been changed so now that a lot of that money is being funneled back into the rum companies and i we actually have a video i can show you on that what is rum oh. it's no secret the federal government puts an excess tax in the sale of all the including rum with puerto rico and the u.s virgin islands the u.s government refunds the tax revenue from rum produced in those territories well, it is a secret is that the money is supposed to go to programs benefiting the citizens of Puerto Rico and U.S. Virgin Islands. But a tremendous amount goes back to the rum companies, who are some of the world's largest liquor companies. Many have foreign headquarters and produce products outside the U.S. With so much money going back to the rum business interests, the residents of Puerto Rico and the U.S. Virgin Islands lose out. Instead of building schools, roads, and bridges with your American tax dollars, large liquor companies are getting richer. The rum cover program has turned into a handout to large liquor companies. Congress should take a hard look at this program and reform it to ensure that the people of Puerto Rico and the U.S. Virgin Islands get the assistance they need. Okay, so that is the uh, the first. 
Also, I'm sorry, I'm losing my voice right now, so I'm going to try and talk as well as I can. But if you have any trouble hearing me, let me know. Um, sure. So the that's a very nice video, by the way. Oh, thank you. We uh, we're pretty happy with it. We think uh, you know, it was a good a good explainer of all the stuff going on there. Um, simultaneously, the other one is IRC fifty ten, which allows tax producers to lower their tax rate by using wine and other flavorings in their products. Um, think like a, you know, a spiced rum or a flavored vodka, um, they are able to reduce their effective tax rate by getting taxed on the percentage of what the, the flavorings are, et cetera. Um, this is something that the Commerce Department has actually said has caused industry players to change their formulations. So that's probably not the intent. Um, it's something that Barack Obama tried to get rid of in his green book. Um, I'll show you this video as well that you know explains it better than I can. Buried deep in the tax code is a program that allows liquor producers to lower their effective tax rate by making liquor. All right, now we're back to the microphone problem here, Alex, you're on mute. which I hate to say. I was now, I, now I hear you. That was a me problem. Um, yeah. So those, oh, okay. Yeah, no, no, nothing on your end. That's that's me. Um, so the site really it's about you know showing the economic impact, the um, nutritional transparency, highlighting the vast array of low and no alcohol options, um, while sim simultaneously pointing out these issues around um, you know, different tax advantages and loopholes that liquor is taking advantage of. Um, you know, we talk about the canned cocktails, we talk about 5010, we talk about um, the rum cover over and all of these things. It's, you know, with 5010, we just, we don't understand the, the logic behind it anymore. Or for rum cover over, we think that, you know, that money should be spent and used for its intended purpose, which is supporting the people of uh, Puerto Rico and the US Virgin Islands. And a huge part of this whole um, website is developing a grassroots advocate army, um, you know, building up people that are pro beer, that want to stand up and sign, uh, sign up and stand with beer, that they are, you know, going to put their name forward if, you know, a legislative issue comes up in a state or on a federal level, these people are willing to become advocates and, um, you know, have their voices heard. Well, that's that, that's that's terrific. Uh, how are you doing on the signups? Um, we have not done a deep analysis yet. We're we're still getting our ads up and running, so I think it's a little premature mm -hmm. to get into that. But um, the reaction generally from the website has been really strong. Um, you know, people both in the industry and outside the industry are. I think I think people are are impressed in that they there's a lot of things they didn't know about already and you know it's either they're learning about it for the first time or they're learning about it in greater detail than they did before and a lot of these things that if you understand them they make a lot of sense it's just you know i think they, they're very esoteric issues that when you look at them from a thirty thousand foot view can be a little intimidating but if you're given you know one minute explainer or you know some quick bullet points it makes it a lot easier to understand these issues sure Excellent. Um, so, so um, I presume you're taking these up to the hill and having your uh, lobbyists talk to uh, people on the hill about these issues. So we're always advocating for all the issues that the beer industry, uh, you know, cares about. This is something where we've seen a lot of, um, you know, cross beer or I guess intra beer cooperation over the last few years. Uh, the BI, the BA, the NBWA. 
Um, even some of the wine groups are, are fairly aligned on a lot of these issues, um, especially when it comes to canning cocktails. So this is, you know, it's, it's part of our repertoire of what we talk to legislators about. And I think this is just another tool that we can use to amplify that message. Great. Uh, I am going to be merciful because I hear your voice going uh, even as even as we're talking here. So I'm going to ask you one more question, and then we're going to end so that you don't lose your voice. We may come back and talk again later when when you're in better shape, but uh, I don't want you to lose all your vocal cords when you're talking to me. Uh, so uh, my my last question is: What's the situation on the aluminum tariff fight that's been going on? They are still there. They are still a problem. Uh, the latest numbers we ran a few months ago is now more than $1.9 billion. And that is having a trickle down in the economy. Um, you know, anyone that is an end user of aluminum is, is subject to those tariffs. We're hopeful that they're going to find a solution. Um, I think, you know, a lot of it has to do with the geopolitical issues with China, which, you know, change on a day by day basis, but, you know, the beer industry is still in the forefront um, of, of pushing back against them. Good. So um, anything that you wish I would have asked you that I did, keeping in mind that your voice is going? Um, no, I, I think I think one thing that I, I will highlight is on this canned cocktail issue. Um, We've had a very successful year. Um, you can go back on the website, look through that map. We have activated in a in a lot of states, and legislators are seeing right through what what's going on. Um, you know, they see an industry that's already doing really well, asking for tax handouts, and they're rejecting it everywhere that they've tried it this year. Um, so I think that that says a lot. And then. Additionally, there was um, there was a survey, uh, not a survey, a study conducted by the Maryland ATF, basically, on the tax reductions in Michigan and Nebraska. Just, they, they were considering, um, as a state, moving to lower canned cocktail tax rates. And they found that, um, you know, it, A, took money out of the treasury, it, B, did not help consumer prices. Um, consumer prices continued to rise as um you know the tax rates for these producers went down so you know i think that says it all that consumers aren't seeing the advantage and and the the liquor companies are great well that's that's uh, that's interesting and i think i've heard about that study so uh it's good to be reminded of it though uh so alex i'm going to thank you for for taking time to talk to us we'll get back together sometime later on when when your voice is uh, not in such dire shape, uh, hey, I'm a guy who I'm a guy who talks a lot and lives with his voice. So I understand what that means and how that feels. And I want to be merciful to you and cut that off. Jeff, is there anything that we should have added or gotten from you here? Uh, no, uh, I I don't really have anything to add. I think Alex covered it pretty well. I mean, just to say that we're we're really excited about this website, and I think that it's uh, you know kind of a long time coming. Uh, and also just you know, like Alex said, it's just a repository for all the information you can need about the industry and, and you know, what uh, the liquor industry is, is doing to kind of line their own pockets. Good. I, uh, Alex, I do want to say it strikes me that you may be a little bit more combative, perhaps, than some of your predecessors over at BI. And uh, I think that's a good thing. I, I am a firm believer in Alan Simpson's uh, line. And you know what it is, I think, because you're smiling already that a charge unanswered is a charge uh, admitted. So, uh, you know, I think, I think it's a good thing to come back. Yeah, no, I think, I think the beer industry, you know, we're a strong, vibrant industry. And, and the, the role of the Beer Institute is to be a fierce, zealot, zealot advocate for the beer industry. Um, and, you know, we can't do that if, if we're going to be shy. So, you know, I think it's a testament to Brian, our new CEO, um, that we've, we've, we're really on the front foot right now. And I think it's, it's going to pay dividends long term. Great. So I'm going to uh, thank you very much for your time. And I'm going to let you go.